broadcasting live from the great New York City landscape. This is the Brooklyn Baritone Podcast. Thank you very much for checking me out. Thank you for your support, for your people who returning, who's returning, who subscribed. Thank you very much for everyone who subscribed, all my friends and families and, and people who just like my content. And this is your first time, hopefully you stick around and you subscribe too. Hopefully you enjoy what I got to say, because what I got to say, I think, sparks a lot of other insight, thought, uh, good stuff, good stuff. Anyways. As I usually start off with my title, my title drop for my podcast is, Do You Heed the Warning Signs? You Need to Learn to Heed the Warning. Or, you know, sometimes people say the writing is on the wall. And you have to understand that we have this, this great skill set, if you want to call it, as people to like ignore a lot of things, uh, things that are blaring in front of us, things to change. You know, sometimes people get into relationships where they say, you know what, I was just so smitten in love. I was totally ignoring all like, you know, the flags that were coming up and everything, you know, or certain situations that probably too good to be true. We get ourselves caught up in it because we didn't heed the warnings. Well, I usually like to get into statistics to at least, you know, bolster what I'm talking about. So I'm not just talking jibber jabber. All right. <clears throat> 29% of people ignore the check engine light on their vehicle. Everyone has done it. I've done it in the past. I try not to have that mindset now. As soon as I see it pop on, I'm like, oh boy, that's that's some money or uh, an inconvenience is going to happen. But anyways, 29%. You know, it's not as high as I thought. I think it's probably a little bit higher. That's my personal opinion. And the source of that is swndigital.com around 2017. But nonetheless, it's still a good amount of people. It's, you know, 29%, 30%, getting close to 50%. So it's still a good amount as opposed to like 5% or 4%. You know, so, so much people, they keep driving around where the check engine light is on, flashed on turn ignition on you start going to where you're going and you pretty much get complacent where you're like ah, i get to that when i get to that or you know it, it it always does that with certain things you know but you have to really go check it out either you learn to be a mechanic yourself or go check that bad boy out get a good diagnostic go to a, a reputable mechanic that you need to you know Make sure that everything is good, everything is great in your vehicle to get that light off because it's there for a reason. It's not there just to annoy you and it's not just there to, um, you know, as a regular part of, of the dashboard uh, interface. But let me go further. All right. Going into like another aspect more into my professional career field, people ignore software security signs about from 75% to 90% of the time due to a pop-up coming up in an inopportune time. That's a lot of people, that's, that's damn near everybody. 75% to 90% of people just straight up ignore, you know, any um, software security, antivirus uh, protocol or signs that pop up, anything that may say, hey, don't go to this website or you sure you want to download this file. So much people just, just skim through it, basically. Uh, that's from the source from that is www.phys.org. That's around 2016. And I'm not going to say I haven't done it. I'm guilty. It's the same thing like those, those, those EULA, the end user license agreements where you download a, a service or a product or an app and you're like, okay, whatever, whatever. Let's just hit next. I agree. I agree. Let me just go and get to the good stuff what i wanted from the services product in the first place and we easily put ourselves in in a state of being you know hazardous it could be for our health could be for our products could be for our, our information our data uh so much things that we compromise because we just don't heed the warnings and they're there for a reason you could say you know because the companies that are probably giving us these products, they don't, they don't want any legal issues. Of course, who wants legal issues? Who wants uh, harm 
to anyone's person or their property on their hands, you know? So, you know, if I'm going to make a product or a service, I'm going to make sure it's, it's the best thing out there that's not going to cause any harm. But in the case it does, there are warning signs. But unfortunately, people tend to reject those and ignore those. Going further, all right, we're going to go further with our attempts to focus on attention and important things. Driving. Rumble strips are put on the roads to alert people that start to move off of their off of their lane or off the road itself. It's useful for someone who's distracted. Many of us are distracted. Even before we had cell phones and stuff, people were, were distracted some way, somehow. Probably not as much, but people were distracted and people who were sleepy. And sleepy driving is terrible. I, I've had one instance where I didn't crash, thankfully, but I was really tired, super tired. I was still in the military. I had to go back to my base in the morning um, and I didn't get enough sleep. You know, you could say that's on me, but uh, out of my body was just tired. It was just tired. And I said, let me just head back to base. And it was a wild ride where I, I was driving, had the windows all the way down. That worked for like about two seconds, three seconds. I turned the music up blasting, you know, that worked for a couple of seconds. I would, you know, start slapping myself sometimes, uh, you know, when I feel myself drowsy. And it was not a great feeling. And I was so drowsy where I actually, it seemed like to me where the lines in the road looked like they started to wave, you know, they started to wiggle a bit. And I, I would always remember that. And after I got back to my destination, my base safely, I said, I ain't doing that again. No way am I going to put myself in, in that predicament. You know, there's times where you may feel like, hey, I want to rest. That's cool. But when you're sleepy, don't do that. So because so many people that want to go out there and sleep and everything and, you know, and that is a unfortunate testament of how our American lives are, because Many, many years ago, television used to cut off at like 12 o'clock and people were either go to you either went to bed because you're not at work, you're not at school. And if you weren't one of those people who were in bed, like the majority of the country, you were doing a professional career that required you to be up at certain times. You work for a hospital, you were a policeman, you were you were. Um, worked as a fireman, you know, you were EMT, you were a truck driver, you know, certain there's certain uh, positions, you know, in hospitality hotel, certain positions will, you know, require you to be up past certain times. But, you know, we kind of had certain, you know, standards. So like, hey, if you're not up, if well, if, you, if, if you're, if you don't need to be up at past a certain time, take your behind to bed. What are you doing up watching TV? And that's part of our culture now because it started with infomercials. I was talking with my good friends about that in depth. And you know, TV just started just coming on 24 seven. Now, if you, anything you want, it's there, keeping people up. You know, we, we have the paper chasing, we're grinding away nine to five. You know, we try our best to work to hopefully get a better footing of what we want from life. But then, you know, as a distraction from that, we have television, we have movies, we have uh, music, all that stuff. But now it's 24 seven. So that is a definite, that's a definite contributor to people staying up longer. And people who get less sleep now, nation overall, guess what? A lot more drowsy drivers. You know, I had a point to all that rambling. So we have rumble strips, so it could wake you up. That's the case. I could have used that when I was driving, case in point. But in the same time, people who are distracted, you know, you may be veering off in the other lane, pay attention. You know, so much things can be avoided if we just pay attention to things, especially the warning signs. Heed the warnings. All right. Now we have some vehicles now that have automatic braking systems to stop for us when a potential collision is detected. That's great. I'm not going to lie. It's great. It's, it's right out the books of science fiction and even fantasy, you know, but we need to be doing better because we, we're trying to make things easier for us. But at the same time, we are losing focus on a, a lot of things. We have a lot of technology, a lot of things. Where we have a lot more freedoms and luxuries available to us. But are we really ready for these things? Are we really ready to take full advantage and to say, hey, you know what? We deserve this stuff. We could use it. We're fully responsible. I don't know about that. That is definitely up for much argument and debate.
to see if we're really ready for the luxuries and the freedoms that we have, you know, especially in this country, but in the world all, all over. You know, so the point I'm making is that we're becoming way too dependent on other things for our own accountability. So instead of us being accountable and really looking at what we're doing and taking stock in what we have and how we treat it and our actions with these things, we're making people, entities, and even products and technology accountable for us where we should be accountable ourselves. You know, I understand, you know, it's technology that helps people out and it does and it saves lives, yes. But why do we have to have these things here to save lives in the first place? Because we're not paying attention to the warnings properly. That's why, you know, I'm gonna go forward with some more that reflects our wonderful Western culture here. Nearly one in two Americans take prescription drugs. Nearly one in two. So that's just about 50% of America. That's a lot. Take prescription drugs. All right. The source from that is Bloomberg.com at circa 2019. As some may probably even argue that it's more than 50%. 50% or just about 50% is a good amount. You know, um... Prescription drugs are usually the preferred method to resolve medical conditions. There are some conditions that, yes, you could say is probably unavoidable, you know, probably due to accidents or certain things or something that people are just born with. Yes, I understand. Or even a temporary fix or relief for a specific things you got going on with you medically, internally, biologically, even, even psychologically. But what that does now, again, is it's another indicator, a good reflection of where we are. Because there are a lot of ailments and sicknesses that can be avoided. I'm always going to say due to lifestyle, your mindset, good to be positive, but you have to have that conducive with positive diet, positive activity, and even positive company that you keep around you, be it family or friends or, or whoever or associates. It's, it's all in how we need to take stock, take responsibility in what we do, what we allow into our lives, into our bodies, into our minds. It's, it's a lot more than just thinking of technology of like, you know, we need to make te technology to, you know, stop this from happening. Cool, I get it. You know, when you have te technological advancements, industrial revolutions and advancements, you're going to have to have things in place to stop, you know, death or harm or destruction, or, you know, or even an inconvenience from happening. I get it. It's what it is. It's just the law of physics for certain things. You know, like you have elevators, you know, over the years, I can only imagine how the first elevators looked before they had, you know, certain buttons that lit up. We had a telecom system in case someone stuck, emergency brakes in there. We had uh, automatic doors that, you know, sense when someone is in the way and it stops from closing. It's so much things, you know, that were developed. I, I get that. But then we get to the point where, you know, we have to take stock in what we actually do because we are far more capable than we give ourselves credit for. We do like to get all of the luxuries and the bells and whistles, but, you know, are we really deserving of these things? You know, uh, you, you could take a clip from Spider-Man, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Free will is an insane amount of power. It is a definite gift. You know, uh, our talents and abilities, again, it's an insane amount of power that we have. And the sad part is most of us don't realize this thing. But going back to the free will, that is an insane amount of power that we have to really take seriously, you know, because our decisions based on our ability to make free will dis you know, judgments and decisions and everything and actions, it, they, they hold consequences. They hold real life consequences. Some consequences, consequences may be immediate where you could see the effects. Some of them are long term or some, some actions you do or words you say starts a domino effect so you may not see the direct result right then and there but especially with continued practice it's going to have an effect and affect so much things you know you always, always have to approach things with a good sense of wisdom 
and humility and even compassion, empathy, sympathy for others as well of what you're doing because so many people feel like, you know, I'm not hurting anybody. Oh, you're hurting yourself. And at the same time, your very presence affects other people around you, whether you wish to accept that or not. But we have to focus on you getting the individual right to understand that, yeah, I need to eat better. I need to get more sleep. I need to use better products. I need to pay attention to certain things. You know, utilize your time good. Utilize your time that you have to improve yourself. You know, when you read a book, audio books, I'm always looking to listen to audio books. Um, read a real book is something engaging in reading a proper book. You know, go exercise. Uh, you know, um, change your mindset around with certain things. Educate yourself with the world that's out there because this, all that will contribute to you constructing a proper life and existence and impact for other people and everything around you. Because, you know, we want more and more and more, but we're definitely not ready for it as a whole. You know, there's some people who are cool with what they have. They understand what they have and they utilize it to the utmost. You know, it doesn't have to just be in the form of them having a lot of wealth because they know how to manage money and time properly. But many people uh, admire, may admire you because you're just a good person overall. Because what? You look to help people out. You do what you say you're going to do. You do a good job or you're just, just basically nice to people. You know, these things contribute to us having a better mindset and having more humility to when certain warning signs or red flags come up, we are very respondent in the proper way to them, you know? So, you know, these things that I just, I ran down, you know, people ignoring their check engine light, the rumble strips, all the, um, the parking assist in vehicles, because so many people don't know how to park properly. I can attest to that. I park nice. I'm not tooting my own horn. I park pretty blasted good. So I figure if you have a license, you should be able to park. But, you know, that's, again, another discussion for another time. Uh, you know, automatic braking systems, uh, um, pharmaceuticals, because we have pharmaceuticals, because we have poor state of health overall in this country because we eat the wrong stuff and do the wrong crap. You know, you heard it already from me. You hear from many other people as well. But you have to learn to heed all of the warnings. They are there for a reason. Our bodies tell us what's wrong. It's just the fact that we've become so normalized. We've normalized the fact of ignoring it. And that becomes dangerous. This is the whole reason I ran on all ran on all these things because people ignore certain things. So we have to keep putting more things into place and more things into place and more things into place. So we're doing more things where we're allowing our technology and our products to take away accountability. We're losing accountability. We're becoming less aware of ourselves and everything around us. But yet we want more. There's going to be a breaking point. There's going to be a breaking point. And we all need to take stock and real accountability. You know, I'm not the most perfect driver. I try to drive as good as I possibly can. There's times I make mistakes. I try to be mindful about many things. You know, yes, experience is the best teacher, but at the same time, um, prevention is the best cure. So if you could do your best to prevent certain things from happening, then, you know, you do it. I always go back to when I was in basic, my T.I. said, if you could have done things right the second or third time around, chances are you could have gotten it done right the first time around. All about focus. You know, no one's perfect. But the more most of us be focused on things, we would be so much more better for it. You know, but that's all I got for today. I hopefully made you guys think about something. I tried to make major issues into something really simple to see. This is the purpose why I do this, why I talk, why I have my podcast, and hopefully that's why you guys are listening to me. And if you want to listen to more or see more of my content, you could always visit my website, which is www.brooklynbaritone.com. I am also on YouTube. My YouTube channel is Brooklyn Baritone. You could also find me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn too. It's Corey Ashley if you want to know. 
And also, I am on the Google Play Store and the iTunes Play Store. Uh, thank you very much for sitting out. Thank you for listening. Uh, you will hear from me next week. I pray that all of you are blessed. I want you guys to walk good. And, uh, you know, take care. I'm out.